Hello, my name is Luke Laffin. I'm a preventive cardiologist and co-director uh, for the Center for Blood Pressure Disorders here at the main campus of the Cleveland Clinic. Um, it's great to speak with you today about the connection that we see between the kidneys and the heart. Um, and really, how does that play into blood pressure and all those other factors? Um, a, a wise mentor once told me that the kidneys and the heart are like a married couple, okay? If one's not happy, the other one probably isn't happy as well, okay? And I, I've always taken that to heart, uh, no pun intended, to think about how medications that we take and how we address cardiovascular risk factors can also have an impact on any type of kidney disease or the health of the overall um, you know, cardiovascular system. Um, it's important to realize that in multiple disease states, uh, the kidneys and heart have a bidirectional relationship. And what do I mean by that? Well, you know, let's just take the example of hypertension, okay? Hypertension can ultimately lead to kidney disease, which can ultimately lead to worsening hypertension, okay? Hypertension ultimately leads to thickening of the heart muscle, and if it's uh, called left ventricular hypertrophy, and then can, in certain circumstances, lead to heart failure, um, amongst other cardiovascular complications, including atrial fibrillation, coronary artery disease, um, aortic dissections, etc. cetera. Um, so thinking about them together is gonna be really important long-term. It's also important to realize that patients with kidney disease don't die of quote unquote kidney disease, okay? We have uh, technologies that can extend life, dialysis, kidney transplants, et cetera. Why do they die? They die of cardiovascular disease, the vast majority, particularly as kidney function declines. There's really good data showing um, that as the level of kidney function declines, um, the most common measurement for that is the estimated glomerular filtration rate, or the GFR. So as it declines, even below 75, um, we see at each stepwise progression, a higher incidence of cardiovascular disease. The same can be said for kidney disease, which uh, is actually noted uh, via the presence of protein in the urine. The more protein or albuminuria that you have in the urine, or that's detected, the, the worse people tend to do from a cardiovascular disease perspective. Now, the good thing is, is that there's medications that can be used that are helpful for the heart and helpful for the kidneys in terms of reducing proteinuria, et cetera. Um, and so keeping that in mind um, is going to be really important. Um, there's certain medication classes that we tend to prefer in patients with chronic kidney disease to ultimately preserve renal function. Um, so that's certain classes of blood pressure medicines um, uh, above others. Um, so it's really important to talk with your doctor, be it your primary care doctor, be it your cardiologist, perhaps it's your nephrologist as well, to think about what the right combination of medications is for you. Um, if we step outside just looking at hypertension um, and uh, its role with kidney disease and heart disease, we also have to think about uh, dyslipidemia or cholesterol issues as well, okay? Um, the, we know that chronic kidney disease, as, because it increased risk of things like strokes and heart attacks, oftentimes those patients will do better if they're taking cholesterol-lowering medicines. So there's certain statins that have a little bit better data in terms of cardiovascular risk reduction. Uh, the example I always use is atorvastatin, tends to be a little bit better for preserving renal function than rosuvastatin. Um, those are respectively Lipitor and Crestor. Um, and so asking your doctor those questions um, is important uh, moving forward um, to understand that we don't really want to be just looking or at one organ in particular, organ-centric, so to speak, taking a step back. And oftentimes your primary care physician is really good at doing that and saying, okay, well, we need a little bit of this, but we also want to be mindful of you know, your kidneys, liver, et cetera. Um, so keeping that in mind is going to be really important. Um, other factors to really think about um, when we're thinking about the kidneys um, and how they impact cardiovascular disease is the impact that we can see in the setting of heart failure, okay? We know that patients with heart failure are more often than not have some underlying degree of kidney disease as well. And that may be because of some of the common precursors, you know, hypertension, diabetes, et cetera. Um, but it's also the hemodynamics um, within the body itself 
can lead to decreased perfusion of the kidneys. It can lead to increased vascular congestion around the kidneys, which ultimately, uh, which ultimately reduces kidney function. Um, again, certain medicines, particularly newer classes of medicines, such as the SGLT2 inhibitors, um, tend to be very well tolerated um, in patients with heart failure and kidney disease. So talking with your doctor about that is going to be really important. Um, so as a parting thought, so to speak, um, we'll oftentimes keep an eye on kidney function because we're taking medications for blood pressure, for cholesterol, et cetera. Um, and don't be you know, alarmed or worried if there is a blip or an abnormality in your kidney function. Understand, it's pretty common and, and we see it, um, but don't dismiss it either. Um, talk to your doctor, see if there's anything that needs to be done um, to reduce your cardiovascular risk and reduce your risk for progression of chronic kidney disease. Thanks very much.